I know you're a, a busy man today. I hear they've got you lined up with uh, a whole whack of interviews. I do. Um, and uh, is is that is that an all right thing for you to do when you've uh, you've got a uh, you've got a show to do as well? Does that uh, tire tire your voice out at all? Uh, talking to interviewers? Yeah. <laughs> no, not really. J- just your brain, perhaps. Maybe a little bit, as long as it's like. I like to be, you know, a couple hours before the show, I like to be just kind of thinking about that and nothing else. But that's, you know, usually the interviews are a lot earlier in the day. So gotcha. it works out fine. Well, that's good. Cause we definitely wouldn't want to tire you out too much before you have to play tonight. <laughs> yeah, I can play a half hour tonight anyway. Gotcha. Um, how's the tour going so far? I'm going great. You know, better than expected, I think. Yeah. Um, you guys are playing to uh, to a bit of a different crowd on this tour? Yeah, nothing new, though. Um, we're used to kind of being the standout band musically. Um, I like that no one really sounds like us. So, But it's where it usually works in our favor. You know, people are, uh, for the most part... Uh, react to us very well. You know, if, if it's, you know, obvious that there's a good chunk of people that don't know who we are, they may not necessarily listen to us too often. You know, the reaction is usually pretty good. And uh, even with people who are just kind of very standoffish at first, you know, kind of arms crossed, frowny face, you know, but they're standing real close. By, by you know, halfway through the set, you know, most of those kind of people are, you know, have loosened up and are actually starting to get into it. Very cool. That's good we to hope hear. For anyway. Awesome. Um, and it, it, you were saying that you're the uh, uh, you're kind of used to this sort of thing, um, you know, being the, mm-hmm. the standout band. Um, you guys have done a lot of these, uh, or have you guys done a lot of these kind of package tours uh, in the past, where you're uh, um, kind of the only traditional type metal band on on the bill? It seems like that's uh, that's all we've really ever done. You know, they're just. I don't know what it is. Like, I think maybe because we're based in North America that, you know, bands like who are kind of flying the, you know, the true metal flag just, just don't get popular and just, and don't get uh, the exposure and then don't get signed and end up touring a lot. So, um, you know, there's, it's more like the the metal core, death core thing that's really popular in, in, uh, in the American, you know, market right now. So, um, you know, the last several years, that's usually the kind of tour we end up on is like, um, you know, drop tuned metal stuff. And, uh, yeah. and uh, I mean, most of it's good, really good, you know, but it's just not, you know, really anything like us at all. So that's just, just the tours that we just kind of end up on. Um, I think if we were over in, you know, based over in Europe, we'd probably end up on more tours that uh, with bands that were at least, you know, marginally more similar to us. So, just the way it goes. Right. But, uh, you know, I, I, none of it's, you know, most of it's uh, been, been uh, positive. I wouldn't say too many tours really have been, you know, a bad decision, you know, in hindsight, maybe one for sure, but you know, all the others like we, we, we take positives out of it no matter no matter what. Right. So but this one, um this one's a little more unusual because there are so many bands and it is like a you know, touring, you know, uh clubs and so on. Um it, it feels Actually, well, no, actually, it doesn't really feel like a, a touring festival. It just feels like a big package tour. I mean, it's not being billed as a festival, but right. um, having seven bands, and, you know, logistically from the get-go, I, I thought, oh, boy, like, you know, there's just going to be a lot of logistical things that would kind of be a bit, uh, bit of a nightmare. But, you know, so far, they all seem to be working out all right. You know, uh, there's a lot of, I mean the logistical things that, you know, maybe the fans don't really think about, like parking, like you know, seven vehicles, all with trailers, you know, there's a bus and, and that kind of thing. Um, you know, sharing space on stage with everyone's gear and everything, but, you know, there's been a lot of sharing of amps and that kind of thing just to make it a lot easier. Um, and, uh, and and everyone gets along well to boot, so, I mean, that's always what you hope for. Everyone kind of 
everyone seems to be pretty mellow and relaxed. No one's really, you know, there's there's not really any like egos or, uh, you know, you know, uppity kind of uh, the uptight fucking like assholes on this tour. So right. That's really good. That's, you know, that's always good. Yeah, for sure. Just out of curiosity, and and you can choose not to answer this, what was the the tour that was a bad idea? Um, We did tour back in 07. um, With uh, the Static X. Okay. Not a band I, I... was ever a fan of, but um, it, the the fans on the majority of those shows just didn't really care about anybody but Static X, and that's not something we'd really. I mean, it was like that for all the all the bands like uh, who were on that tour. Like they just weren't really into it. Like except Static X. I don't know which Static X have a strange fan base. I guess I, don't know, I wouldn't know. Who to you know? Who who would even share have like similar fans to them? I, I couldn't even wager a guess. It was just they just seemed really standoffish, and you know, every, everybody else kind of encountered that too. Like, um, so you know, in, in hindsight, it was like, why did we do that too? Or people did not give a shit. Like, you know, uh, our fans weren't going to it. Like, uh, and you know, people, kids, you know, people weren't buying merch. You know, except it had a static actual go on it. So, <laughs> right. Uh, it was weird. That's really the only tour we kind of look back and go, you know, uh, for for a lot of different reasons. That that was just not a good idea. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, now you guys took some time off from touring, which is pretty unusual for you um, after this summer, right? Yeah, we well, we did our last full tour back in May last year across Canada then we decided to take a break enjoy a summer at home for the first time in a while and uh, you know just took a break for a little longer than you know we normally would have but um, you know we we were keeping in mind that we wanted to you know have a record written before the end of the year and uh, and we did and we ended up recording it for the end of year too so Oh, that's awesome. Yes, we, we did what we set out to do. That's excellent. So d- does that mean you guys took some time and, and did some of the domestic things, uh, cleaned out the litter box, and uh, um, actually got some home time for a change? Yeah, totally. Um, you know, I just had an extended Facebook visit. You know, we all just, we all have, uh, you know, we all live with significant others. So um, I was able to just be like, a house husband, I guess, for uh, for a long while, and just just really, for the most part, just do nothing. I didn't really go out a lot. You know, I just kind of like being a homebody and hanging out with my pets, and you know, while the wife's at work, and then when she comes home, we just gonna just hang out, and watch TV, and you know, go for walks with the dog and that kind of thing. Gotcha. Just do what married married couples do. Just kind of take a break. I didn't really listen to much music and. Uh, you know, if I if I'm driving, I'd throw on like talk radio. You know, that's what I did. I just kind of avoided music for a long while. Just kind of chilled out. So I did take a take a couple trips. Like you know, wife and I went camping. You know, we did went to California for for a week or so at one point, and you know, just kind of keep the uh, keep the band stuff. You know, psychologically, uh, you know, mentally out of the picture. Just, just so we could uh, you know, not burn ourselves out, and you know, but now we're now we're back into it, you know. Right now, how long did you guys take away from each other before you uh, you came back and started writing the uh, the album? Well, I mean, we not we weren't really completely uh, away from each other for that long. We we did the odd show in the summer, um, but uh, you know. We're we're always like kind of nearby, and we're always like keeping in touch with each other about about other, but just band related stuff in general. Right. Um. But so it never really seemed like we were that far apart from each other for uh, for for too long. Gotcha. Um. I guess though, I mean, 
with the exception of the few like shows we just kind of rehearse for and you know go go do like kind of a weekend trip or two um yeah we were really probably off for like almost four months like before we really uh, you know got back to you know thinking about okay we're going to start writing and uh, record some right. by the end of the year when you guys write do you all get together and and, uh, and write together or is there a whole lot of bringing bits and pieces in um well the guitar players will will write the riffs and you know bring it into the jam space and uh we'll get with with Ash the drummer and um they'll just kind of work on you know they'll have you know kind of skeletons you know songs the, the starters anyway that you know kind of have some like you know, uh, pre-programmed drums on it just for reference and then you know Ash will kind of do his thing and then they'll just sort of, sort of start arranging it and then you know they'll give something to me once they've got like you know a, a good chunk of you know the base of the song done and then uh, then I'll just start getting lyric ideas from that and then once I've sort of jotting stuff down then I'll I'll like just try it out after they've you know maybe arranged it a little more okay it'll start off you know with some riffs and then and then by the end of it you know other people's kind of voices and input get thrown into the mix until you know, like we have like a finished piece to work to really really you know work on it and then eventually like try out live you know if we the opportunity presents itself you know, something we like to do is we try a song a new song out live before we record it just to see how it goes over and Really, it's a different feeling in the jam spot than it is when you're actually up on stage playing it. Absolutely. It's interesting. I, 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 I've spoken to some people recently, or a lot of people recently, who talk about how um, they write and record songs and then have to figure out how to play it live before they go out on tour, but you guys are, are actually um, making sure that the stuff works live before you, go, before you record it. Well, of course. Like we're we don't i mean we're we're a guitar bass drum and vocal band you know we don't uh we, we we've thrown in like you know keyboards and stuff on songs here but but nothing to the extent where we'd have to worry about the song sounding like so drastically different when we when we put it into a live setting you know? um yeah I'm, I'm amazed that bands would would even struggle with uh, worrying what it's you know if it's gonna if they're gonna be able to play it live like once they write it unless they're you know programming everything on a computer and they're not actually even picking up a single instrument you know right so I mean I guess it's just a different kind of band that would, that would be like that you know we're 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 a heavy metal band and <laughs> we're geared for the for the live setting so you yeah. know recording is just you know a, a byproduct of what we what we're already doing right absolutely um now you guys are doing um you were saying you're you're only doing about a half hour set on this tour is it um very uh heavy with new material um we're doing a few um we like to fit in as many songs as we can uh with what the time we've got if we're not doing a headlining set so you know, we're we're not messing around too much with you know, uh, uh, like talking too much between songs. You know, I mean, I think it's important to interact with the crowd. Like, I I, I don't really like it when bands just kind of play and play and play and you know, don't acknowledge the crowd at least or say what's up. You know, right. and just get a, a feeling from them. You know, we will, we want to have a little bit of that. We just say hey how's it going we're three inches of blood you know but you know keep it very brief to say you know we got a new record out there but then just kind of like go through as many as we can um we tend to fit about seven songs into a live set uh into a, a live half hour set so um we want to promote the record and so we feel three is a, is a, is a good uh, good number to try out and then uh, that leaves four other songs that we can you know put from other records and do you uh do you change that up uh often oh uh, we have a we have a little we've swapped in uh a new song for and a different new song um a couple times um 
and and on this tour we all we did a we took a song off our off our EP that we put out last year and we kind of threw that in and moved in, in place of another like uh, kind of slightly older one just, right. to, just to be different you know it, it, you can tour a set for you know even a couple tours in a row and, and, and feel like you know we may be getting really tight but it's kind of getting the it, it's getting kind of stagnant like you want to kind of keep it interesting for yourself and, you know luckily now we've got the new songs to put in the set and we're still kind of getting used to playing them live so that at least feels you know somewhat fresh and, you know it's, it won't get repetitive you know for a long while I mean as long as we keep in keep it interesting by like changing it up every so often and we like to be mindful of be like oh did we play this song last time we were in this town like you know it's hard sometimes, but you know, we, we try and remember stuff like that. Like, oh, we haven't played this song in a while. We, we probably haven't played it here forever, so let's try this one out. That's very cool. It's 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 good that uh, you guys are, are mindful of that. There's so many bands out there who, um, you know, at five albums in would probably stick to the same uh, set list time after time after time and maybe throw in one or two new songs. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure they could, that well, would, you that know, gets tiring. I, I, there's a lot to be that. said. There's a lot to be said for having a set list that's really, really solid and play the same set every night for an entire album cycle. But uh, you know, um, there's there's definitely songs that are going to be in the set every night. You know, but um, you know, from a musician standpoint. You know, we want to, you know, kind of keep it interesting for ourselves too. You know, I feel we're we're a really tight live band, I think. Anyway, so um, changing the setup is not really a problem for us. Like, and and have it in terms of having to worry about whether it's, you know, it's going to flow properly. You know, right. Um, no, you know, we we, we want to be able to play play like deep cuts, like songs that you wouldn't necessarily expect us to play. You know, we're we're as we're fans of, you know. And like seeing a band for like like Slayer or whatever, like having seen them like many many times, but they always seem to play something that I have never heard them play live before from a from an old record. So you know, I like that's why I did, I, I always like going to see them every time. So I I would I would hope that I'm gonna I'm gonna see that from from a band like uh, every time. You know, I'm gonna expect to hear certain things, but then I want to hear something something a little different. It does something unexpected. Yeah. Absolutely. If really lucky. And uh, so when you guys are rehearsing for a tour, do you do you literally rehearse um all five albums or or do you do you just kind of put things together kind of as you're going? Well, we we tend to pick a set list and and say okay, these songs are definitely going here. Um someone will just kind of throw it, "Hey, do you guys want to play this song on this tour?" So I'll suggest something and it's it, we we kind of just throw names out of songs and just go all right. Well, we haven't played this in a while. I'd really like to play that, this one. Some guys will say, "I I really like playing this song live," and we haven't done that in a couple tours. So uh, let's try that out. Uh, it's 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 kind of just a throw throw your hat in the ring and, and you know, let's just see what happens. And then right. We'll 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 write write a certain order and then just see what kind of flows best. Very cool. And now you have uh, you've had added Byron Stroud uh, on f- uh, as the new bass player in the band. Um, has he come in and said, "Hey, um, th- here's a song from you know the first record I'd really like to play" or anything like that at this point? Not really. No. Um, he Byron's played with us before. Actually, like we before we did Here We Die Doom. We were between bass players, and we had a tour um, with Slipknot, a uh, run of dates out, out east uh, in uh, eastern Canada and some of the some of the Midwest states. And Byron's been a friend of ours for a long time. You know, uh, he he said, "Hey, well, I'll do it. I'll fill in." So he had some. He's you know, been strapping and strapping young lad in Fear Factory, and you know, he he was available and said, "Hey, you know, I can fill in for you if you want." So like okay cool so he actually still knew some of the songs from back then so we we kind of went through what he already knew and what we taught him and then what he could like easily pick up again 
and and then of course uh, uh, put in some some of these new songs he had to learn, and then you know some from the last record, which uh, you know we hadn't uh, even recorded yet. So it was mainly like the first songs from like the first three that that he knew. Right. Um, so you know he had to learn more. We basically kind of told him like these are our staples and then you know here's you know what we're all what we're gonna we feel like we want to throw in um we'll see down the road like yeah maybe uh maybe he'll suggest a song or two you know we'll just see what you know, what happens but uh you know we aim on you know teaching him teaching him more like when we've got got the time we, you know as it is we've got like pretty pretty hefty schedule like after this tour and so there's not gonna be a lot of breaks to uh you know get into the you know, jam space and, you know, trying to, you know, teach him ones he doesn't know yet and or right. like relearn some, you know, that we, uh, you know, get brush up on ones we haven't played in a while too. I mean, we, we always want to do that, but, you know, but sometimes it's difficult with our, the way the tour schedules can be. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you guys are, are, are scheduled right up through uh, into the end of May. Um, have you uh, have you had a, a, a summer Canadian tour planned or anything like that at this point? We're working on something. We don't have a specific timeline yet, but that's something we want to do uh, before the it gets really cold again and you know becomes kind of dangerous to tour Canada. Right. Because that Canada is like a, obviously a very very important place for us. You know that's where we we you know consistently you know do really well and you know some of our some of our best uh, fan bases are in uh, you know in, in Canadian cities. So right. We're always, always, uh, always mindful to keep them, uh, uh, make sure we've got them on the list. Of, for sure. Uh, fans we got to come back to. Very cool. Well, Cam, thanks so much for taking some time to speak to me today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. And uh, congratulations to you and the rest of the guys on a fantastic record. Long Live Heavy Metal is thanks. absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, cool. Thank you. I have actually one quick question for you and one quick request. And uh, the question okay. is: is uh, now that you've got uh, Byron in the band, band, and, and Shane's grown his uh, beard back, um, is there press pressure on on Justin to actually learn how to grow a beard? No, we've never we've never made it a requirement. Like the fact that Ash has a beard now and grew out his hair is like, he, we never told him he had to do that. You know, he just decided to do it on his own. Right. Justin. Justin's one of those guys that like he'll grow his facial hair. You know, every now and then he'll just decide, oh, I'm going to grow a beard for this tour, and then he'll just shave it off and at the end, or he'll keep it for a little while. You know, he just kind of goes in phases. He, he, uh, you know, he'll have big long sideburns, and then he'll just kind of get rid of them, and then he'll grow them back. And, right. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> it's just funny to see everybody now fully bearded and then then justin with his almost baby face in the pictures now 